Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And I often get questions about the ways that I display my plants. So today I thought I would take you through some of my favourite plant styling tips to help make your home feel really natural and planty without it feeling too overwhelming or cluttered. So yes, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So most of these are purely plant styling tips, but I have thrown in a couple of DIY options as well because I find that fun. And the first one is revamping your plant pots. And I absolutely love doing this. I do it to, I would say probably about 90% of the plants in my collection. And this is just a plastic nursery pot that I've just used macrame cord, string, ribbon, anything I can find really, along with my glue gun to decorate and make look really pretty. Obviously, it's a really cheap alternative to buying ceramic pots. It's much better for the environment to do things yourself. And it does just mean that you can add a really kind of personal touch to all of your plant pots, which I just really enjoy. Like, I'm kind of quite into, like, I guess you'd say kind of like bohemian style. I don't know if that's kind of exactly how you define it, but I just quite like being able to put my own stamp on something and use the colours that I want to use and create something that I probably wouldn't be able to buy in a shop. And it is ridiculously easy to do. Honestly, anybody can do it. It's just the case of investing in a cheap glue gun. I'll link the one that I use down below. A lot of the pots in my collection, I'll just wrap string around them and glue that down and keep them as just one solid colour. Some of them I have got a little bit more kind of creative with and I've done patterns and different shapes and stuff like that. But as I say, I just think it's a really unique way to kind of complement your home style and just make it yours. And I don't know about you guys, but whenever I walk into someone's space, I always love being able to kind of, I don't know, get a sense of the character of that person from what I walk into. And for me, just having little bits of homemade kind of DIY stuff here and about even if it is very very simple stuff like this it just I don't know it just makes me feel at home and it makes it I don't know it makes things feel more like mine just kind of more personal if you know what I mean and I have got a whole playlist on my YouTube channel of DIY plant projects that I've done so if you are interested to know more about the plant pot making or anything else like that then I will link that playlist down below as well and the next plant styling tip that I absolutely love, it might sound really, really simple, but it's just having plants on different levels. Firstly, it just really helps to create that gorgeous kind of like jungly vibe in your home. If you look at my background here, even you can see I've got, I've got plants on lots of different levels. I've got a whole hanging rail system that I've put up in my flat, meaning that I've got more floor space for other things or other plants. And I just absolutely love the way that it looks. Obviously you can like really optimize the conditions for your plants in this way as well. Like for example, if you've got three fairly low light plants like I do over there, I can keep them all in the same position by having them raised up on that stand instead of just shoving them all in a corner on one level where you can't really appreciate them as much. So yeah, plant stands are a really fantastic way to do this. I've got lots of DIY and shop bought plant stands in my collection. And the other thing that I really love doing is and I'll put a clip in so that you can see, is getting like a nice basket or some kind of container. You could technically use another pot that you like for this and flipping it upside down and putting a plant on that. And I've got quite a heavy plant on the one that I'm looking at. So what I've done is I've just put a nursery pot underneath it. So it essentially creates quite a stable ledge to be able to put things on. And I just think that looks really nice. Again, it allows you to kind of choose something that suits the aesthetic of your home a little bit better, kind of matches your colour scheme. And I just also find that it allows me to really appreciate the plant on top in a way that I probably wouldn't be able to if it was just on the same level as loads of others. So yeah, I've got my Philodendron Splendid on the one that I'm talking about at the moment. And I just love that plant so much. And I feel like if it was down on ground level, you probably wouldn't be able to appreciate it as much as you can when it is raised up and you can kind of differentiate it a little bit from the other plants in that area. 
And I do find that sometimes if I go into a space where all of the plants are literally just on one level, it's although like you can still kind of appreciate the plants, it just makes everything feel a little bit, I want to use the word cluttered again, but it makes everything feel like it's kind of been put there without thought. And although like, I think kind of the point of styling your plants in a way that works is that you shouldn't be able to tell that they've been styled. It should just kind of look effortless and lovely, obviously while still thinking about the needs of the plants. But yeah, I just find having everything kind of on one level or just on like a table level and ground level can be a little bit heavy and a bit distracting from other things in the space. So yeah, raising your plants up, allowing some to trail, allowing some kind of big statement floor plants, and then just kind of grouping some little ones together as well, I find works really well. And as I say, I personally feel like it just helps to create a really beautiful jungly vibe without feeling too like 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 it's too much like the space still feels lovely and open and airy and you feel like you can still move through it and you're not constantly worried about hitting plants or breaking something I just think it, it really helps to just free things up a bit and on the note of having plants on different levels, another styling tip that I absolutely love is training some of your plants to climb the walls. And you can actually be quite strategic with this. And I read up on this a little while ago and I found it really interesting. You can actually use them to kind of create the illusion of a bigger or a smaller space. So the plant behind me, my heartleaf philodendron, I've trained that one to climb up one of the beams in this room. And because this room does have very high ceilings, it just kind of helps to accentuate that and make them feel even higher if that makes sense it just kind of draws your eye to the fact that they are very lovely high ceilings and I really like that but then again if you look at my dining space over there I've recently trained my Raphidophora tetrasperma to just kind of climb around the edge of the wall there and I think that kind of helps to make that space feel a little bit more intimate because it, I think if the plant was going all the way up then it would make it feel much more vast and kind of open but I feel like it just frames the area really nicely and especially because this room is all open plan it kind of just helps to define it as its own little area. And I'm actually tempted now that I've done that to do the same with some more plants in that area just to kind of accentuate it a little bit more. Also, again, it's really important when you're doing this to take into consideration things like lighting requirements for plants. Like, for example, my Raphidophora over there, that one has been growing in relatively low light, kind of medium to low light. And so I, I know that the conditions of that plant are going to be good. But what you don't want to do is take a plant, put it in a position that you think looks really beautiful and not actually think about the needs of that plant. Because in fact, I did that when I first moved in here. I had a pothos plant, an epipremnum that had been used to growing in very high light conditions. And I didn't kind of slowly acclimate it as well as I should have done to the new space. I just assumed that because it was a plant that could survive in lower lighting conditions that it would be absolutely fine going straight into them obviously it wasn't that was in hindsight very very silly of me I trained it to climb the beam in my bedroom and very very quickly the plant just started going downhill and I had to I had to take it down again and it was not it was not a happy plant and I ended up chopping the whole thing up but that's a different story <laughs> but yeah, I use these little twisty kind of stick on strips to train the vines to climb and they're really cheap to get off Amazon. Again, I'll link them down in the description box below. And personally, for me, they have been the best possible thing. I have tried some other things in the past that haven't worked quite so well. These ones also, in my experience so far, don't mark the walls too badly. So if you are renting, it's, it's not as much of an issue. As I say, that is just in my experience. I haven't had to take many of them off the wall yet, but the ones that I have, have been absolutely fine. Also with those clips, if you find that they're not sticking that well, just give them a really, really, really good push because when I first put mine on, I just kind of stuck them quite lightly and vines started falling down and I was like, oh my God, they don't work. But when I went back and gave them a really, really good push, they do now stick on the walls. And some of them, like the one behind me, are supporting kind of quite heavy vines. So yeah, that is definitely what I would recommend. And my next tip is to create wall propagation stations. And I've got a few examples of this but I actually the other day transformed one of my hanging rails that previously just had my hanging plants on into a little propagation station and I fed fairy lights through it as well and I think that looks really lovely. I just got some cheap glass bottles although you can also use old herb and spice jars and stuff like that. I just threaded through some macrame cord. I did actually use cable ties on those ones to secure them but I don't always 
do that. And yeah, now I've got a little water propagation station that is very easy to maintain. It's very easy to monitor as well. And I personally think looks absolutely gorgeous. I did, as I say, have more of my hanging plants up there before, but with this hot weather at the moment, I don't know why I think because that hanging rail is right above my doors, the heat is just rising and everything up there was drying out pretty much instantly. So it's just a lot lower maintenance for me to do it that way. But I also really like the look of it. But I've got lots of little ones kind of propagating on walls around my flat. I've got one over there that's actually just held on by a command strip, those kind of sticky kind of Velcro strips. And it's been up there for about four months now with absolutely no issues. Again, command strips are really great if you're renting because you can just pull them off. And again, in my experience, they haven't seemed to wreck the paintwork or anything like that. Also, if you're on my Patreon, you'll have seen the ranch propagation station that I made in a video recently. And again, I just went out and foraged that branch from the woods when I was out walking with Yoli. And I think it looks really, really pretty. And it's just a great way to propagate plants whilst also making them look really lovely and being able to just really appreciate them. Because previously, I've just kind of stuck something in water, stuck something in moss, put it either into one of my cabinets or just shoved it to the side somewhere. And I haven't really taken taken that much notice of it whereas I feel like if you make them into kind of like a design feature you're you're almost forced to monitor them a little bit better so so yeah and I have also got a macrame plant hanger that my friend Emma made above my bed in my bedroom and I just think that looks so beautiful if you're really crafty then you can make them yourself but places like Etsy and stuff like that are fantastic places to find kind of functional wall art that looks really pretty but you can also incorporate plants into as well so yeah I use Etsy for so many planty things and it's just fantastic to support individuals and small businesses and stuff like that so yes Etsy is a winner and the next tip is to put plants around your TV or electricals that you don't particularly like the look of. I know for me, like, I feel like my TV is kind of functional. I'll watch it every now and again, but I don't particularly like the look of it. And I feel like with anything kind of man-made and not that pretty, just putting nature around it just kind of, it helps to just soften it a little bit. I've done it with my radio and stuff like that in my kitchen as well, although that's not quite so dark and dramatic. But I've got lots of my little plants just all around the bottom of my TV and I feel like when the television's not on I can just kind of sit and appreciate my plants and I don't have to be looking at a box on the wall. And at some point as well, I thought about putting a little shelf above my TV and doing the same probably with some trailing plants coming down behind it, because again, I feel like it would just really help to soften that area. The only reason I haven't done that yet is I'm kind of in two minds about whether I might also train some vines to go across that wall. So I haven't reached the decision yet. And another, oh, another tip that I heard a little while ago, and I think I mentioned in a video when I first started on YouTube, um, but I read this in a book and I can't remember exactly what the book was called, but I, I bought this kind of like plant decorating book a while ago. Um, and someone was saying that hanging plants kind of in your window, if you don't have a particularly nice view outside, can just kind of firstly help to bridge the gap between the inside and the outside, almost making it feel like nature's coming right through your window. But also if you have got something outside your window that you don't particularly want to look at, then it can just help to make it feel like your view is a little bit nicer. And actually my flat is a perfect example of this. I'm obviously not gonna show you the entire view outside my window, but I have got some big kind of like an industrial estate type thing very close to me and it's not particularly nice to look at. So when I look over at the window now, I see all my lovely plants and that does make, it does make the view feel a little bit better. The other thing on the electrical note as well is that plants can be a really great way of hiding wires. Like I haven't got around to doing any trunking or anything like that in my flat and I have got certain bits where you can see like plug sockets and wires and things that can typically make a place look quite cluttered. For example, I've got I've got a, um, a stick on plug on the side of my cabinet there that's got my grow lights, and my fans and all of those kind of outlets there. And as you can tell, you can't really see it because I've used the vines from my Hartley Philodendron to just kind of cover it. So it just kind of helps to disguise that and just makes it feel lovely and planty instead of horrible and wiry. And another tip that I really love, perhaps a slightly more obvious one, but I'm going to mention it anyway because I think it's wonderful, is using plants as centerpieces in tables. And again, this just helps to kind of scatter your plants throughout the space a little bit more and make it feel lovely and jungly, but not, again, like not too cluttered. 
I've got my Alocasia Fry Deck currently, my Michelitziana on my coffee table, and I've got one of my Aglaonemas over on my dining table. And you could kind of incorporate plants with lots of kind of beautiful colours and stuff like that to almost make them feel like a bunch of flowers, but it just helps to really accentuate that space and kind of define it a little bit more. And I personally at the moment have just got one plant as, as like one centerpiece, but a tip that I have heard before is that if you're going to use plants to display in like the middle of a table or anywhere when you're kind of grouping plants is to group plants in odd numbers and I know that sounds absolutely crazy but if you look at it visually it kind of does make sense like if you put two plants together sometimes it can feel a little bit kind of organized and structured and like they've been very much placed whereas if you kind of put a third plant in the middle it almost feels a little bit more random and like I don't know, it just it just seems to work more. I can't explain exactly why. If you know the answer as to why, let me know down in the comments. But yeah, if you're gonna group plants in that way, then I would, from what I know, recommend doing it in odd numbers. And another DIY tip that I have is make your own hangers. I've made videos on this before of the ways that I like to make my macrame hangers. Some of them are a little bit more intricate. Others are so easy, honestly, like, a five-year-old could do it. They are very, very, very simple indeed. So again, I'll link that video down below if you're interested. But again, just in terms of having plants on different levels, it just really helps to kind of add to the dynamic of the room. I personally really like the look of macrame hangers. You wouldn't have to use the same kind of neutral macrame cord that I use. You could, again, get fancy with colours and beads and all sorts if you wanted to and kind of really mix it up to put your own personal touch on it but yeah I really like doing it the way that I do it because I feel like it matches my home very well again of course you can buy macrame hangers I mean you can get them on Amazon and places like that but again I would always recommend using places like Etsy because again you're supporting the individuals and not just corporations but yeah, I, I just think it's a lovely touch and I think it just allows you to be able to really appreciate your plants instead of just cramming them all together. Oh, I've just thought of another spontaneous tip on the spot. Uh, so if you watch my other videos, you'll know that I bang on about texture in plants all the time and I always try to alternate, so I guess this is a styling tip, I always try to alternate the kind of the colours and the textures of my plants when I place them so that I can still kind of individually appreciate them and it's not just like a block sea of green because obviously a lot of, in fact all plants are very individual, they will all look very different and they'll all be very unique and I personally just really like to be able to appreciate them individually as well as just when I look at a room so yeah like along the back of my sofa I've got a little unit and I've grouped a lot of plants with similar lighting requirements there and I've tried to just kind of put them in an order so that it's not just like four green ones then two kind of bluey silver ones I've tried to really mix it up so that even if I just walk past it and I look down at that area I can still get a sense of the individuality within the plants. And this next tip kind of falls into a plant product that I like, although I thought I would mention it in this video because it's not actually designed for plants. If you've watched my plant products video that I made a while ago, then you will have heard about it already. But I love using transparent shower shelves to stick onto my windows to put plants in. They kind of just act like indoor window boxes, but obviously because they're transparent, they allow light to pass through. It, they're, they're almost kind of invisible when you've got plants in them. And again, in terms of putting plants on different levels, I think it looks really really beautiful as I've already said in this video I don't have a particularly nice view outside so when I look at my window I still get all the lovely light but most most of what I see is plants and it feels very soft and natural as opposed to harsh and industrial if I didn't have them there so yeah I will link them down in the description box below again they were just a fairly cheap Amazon find and they're very easy to put on you just stick a pad onto the window and you can lift the window box off and on because in my bedroom I've got them on the window on a door that opens and when I want to open that door because it's a sliding door I literally just lift it off open the door and then I can pop it back on so yeah I honestly wish I'd known about them sooner I think they look lovely and they are very functional and just a very quick tip because I know I have already spoken about having plants on different levels but one thing I also really love doing is having plants trailing down that are on top of things so over in my kitchen area I've got a big pothos plant that trails down next to my cooker and although I do have to be careful that it doesn't singe or get in the way too much I'm kind of constantly chopping and propagating that plant I just think it really helps to soften my kitchen because my kitchen's very it's all, all very shiny and it's quite harsh and probably not the style that I would choose for myself if I was 
building a kitchen but again I feel like it just helps to soften that area a little bit and just makes everything feel a little bit more a little bit more natural and I know I've spoken a lot before about the functionality of using a cabinet especially for tropical plants to help create a lovely warm humid kind of contained space for your plants but cabinets also I personally think look gorgeous they're a fantastic way of organizing your plants you can really kind of monitor what they need in there because obviously you're in control of their lighting of of pretty much everything so besides the fact that they are absolutely brilliant I also think that they do just look really lovely like I've got my Ikea Millsbow cabinet here which my friend Emma very kindly got me as a moving in present here she got it second hand as well because I know cabinets can be quite expensive she found that one on a Facebook group I've got a little like Ikea cabinet over on my kitchen counter over there and again I think it looks really lovely I'm pretty sure that was under 20 pounds and also the propagation cabinet that I've got in my bedroom I actually found that cabinet on eBay for under 20 pounds a couple of years ago now and I converted it into a grow cabinet again if you've got questions about how to convert cabinets or anything like that I have made videos on them so I'll put some I'll put some useful links down below but yeah, I just think they look really lovely. They're a really great way to stop your space from feeling cluttered because again, everything's kind of in a contained area. You can, again, as I've already said, really kind of appreciate the individuality within your plants and they are just, they are just fantastic. And if I had a bigger space, I would 100% have more cabinets. And similarly to what I said about putting plants next to a TV or kind of something very man-made that you don't particularly want to look at, over in my kitchen area, this can be applied to like any space, but in my kitchen, I've just dotted little plants and propagations kind of within my, I was going to say utensils, what do you call them? Appliances, within my appliances, just because again, I feel like it helps to really soften that area and make it feel lovely and planty in a way that if I took that away, I think it would probably just look a bit... I want to use the word bony, I don't think that's right, it's probably just look a little bit harsh, but yeah, I just like how I've managed to kind of create the plant theme running through this space in my flat, and yeah, just having little ones there is just a really nice way to still be able to make it feel planty, appreciate them, and still have space to be able to kind of do functional things in the kitchen. But as I say, you can do this in, in any area. I've done bits, bits and bobs like that throughout my flat, but I feel like that is just a good example of a space to look at because that is a space that obviously needs, needs to be functional. And finally, something that I really wish that I'd done sooner, and I actually only set up a couple of months ago, is creating a designated propagation zone. And that's not saying that obviously you can't propagate in other areas of your home, as I've already showed in this video, I've got, I've got plants propagating everywhere. But things like propagation boxes and tubes and tubs and stuff like that often don't look very pretty. And for, for years and years and years, I've just had mine kind of dotted here, there and everywhere. And since I've set up my propagation zone in my bedroom, I, I just think it works so much better. And I actually really love the look of it. I love how it kind of looks quite sciencey and I just think it looks beautiful. I did, again, I did a video on how I set all of that up. I've literally just used, used a built-in shelf in my bedroom put some grow lights underneath and that's pretty much it. I do also say in that video that you don't have to use a built-in shelf, you could do it with any shelf you like, but I just really think it looks organised, it looks neat, it doesn't look too, I don't know, like it, it just doesn't look, I know I'm using the word cluttered all the time, but it doesn't look cluttered in my opinion and when you've got like I live in a one bedroom flat with over 300 house plants and it would be very easy for my space to feel overwhelmed and cluttered and I, I love my plants so much, but at the point that they start to overtake me is the time that I will start thinking about downsizing my collection. So I've just tried to do as many things as possible to really feel like I can live in harmony with them and Yoli can live in harmony with them as well without too many plant dramas. But yeah, I think those are those are kind of the top styling tips that I use in my home all the time. If you've got others, then please do comment them down below because I would love to know them. I'm always thinking about new ways that I can kind of try designy type things with my plants and I find it really fun. Um, but yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day and I will see you in the next video.